Hi folks, welcome to this series on deep learning in MATLAB. In this series, we will go over some basics of deep learning development in MATLAB and also cover some advanced features. I intend to cover all the way from writing your first neural network to some advanced stuff like automatic differentiation and writing custom networks. I haven't seen too many videos about the advanced stuff on YouTube and that's kind of why I decided to make this tutorial. I have used TensorFlow and PyTorch. So basically these are Python based frameworks and uh, because I'm more comfortable with them, but never MATLAB. So this is kind of a learning experience for me as well. And I'm making these videos as I learn about these things in MATLAB. So um, what you need is MATLAB, of course, and the deep learning toolbox for MATLAB as well. The one thing that I would recommend that you check out is the documentation of the deep learning toolbox. This documentation, as with all MATLAB documentations, is pretty insane. And anyone can basically, if you just go through this documentation, you can learn deep learning in MATLAB from scratch. And it's pretty well written with lots of examples. So I definitely urge you to check it out. Before we actually get to coding, one question I'd like to address is, why should anyone consider MATLAB over open source frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch? I came across, for this, I came across a nice answer on MATLAB Answers where uh, this exact same question is raised and there's a pretty nice reply about it. So um, you can definitely read it out. So I'm not gonna go over detail about it. And um, basically, if you're already inside the MATLAB framework, if you're inside the MATLAB environment. It makes more sense to just do deep learning there. And MATLAB certainly excels in certain aspects, like the deployment aspects of deep learning on how to generate CUDA codes for deep learning. So it's pretty good in that aspect. And um, it's not open source, it's closed source. So there's, there'll definitely be a development lag. You won't always get the most cutting edge things in deep learning in MATLAB immediately. But then what you have is well tested. And you don't need to know a lot of coding to get started with deep learning. So that's one of its primary features. And um, again, if you're in the MATLAB ecosystems, just use deep learning there, right? So that pretty much covers the intro. And um, let's start with our first neural network in MATLAB. Great, now we can begin writing our first code in MATLAB. And this will be a hello world example for deep learning. And all that it does is basically load in a network and then pass, we'll pass in an image and the network will tell you what category does that image belong to. So it's a pretty simple code. And since it's just a few lines, I won't be using live script or um, scripts. So I will just be typing in the command window. So I assume some very basic familiarity with uh, MATLAB and a bit of deep learning, but um, I will be covering most of the advanced topics. So it's fine if you uh, don't know a lot about deep learning. Now uh, we'll begin by just loading in the network. So in this variable called net, I load in AlexNet and this should just directly load in the network for me. You might receive an error telling you that, uh, hey, you don't have AlexNet installed. So in that case, all you need to do is go to the add-on browser and then install add-on. It's a support package. So you should be able to install it from the add-ons. Now, AlexNet is um, historically, it's one of the oldest convolutional neural networks that became famous, like among the um, big deep networks like ResNet and and so on. This, this one, this is the oldest, and this is responsible for starting the deep learning revolution. So there is a very famous image classification competition called ImageNet, and AlexNet was the first deep neural network, or rather the first co deep convolutional neural network that won this competition. So this started the deep learning revolution. So um, yeah, and it's maybe 50 to 100 MB big. So this might take a couple of seconds to load in. And 
AlexNet is, so when we load it in, it loaded this network with all its weights and biases. So what does that mean? It means that this network was pre-trained. So this is not a blank network. This network has been trained and it knows what image corresponds to what category. So, um, so in a linear regression, you, it's a linear regression, a line is parameterized by, in 2D is parameterized by slope and um, uh, the intercept. So uh, in this case, a neural network is parameterized by a lot of quantities and those all quantities have been trained and uh, the trained model is loaded. So uh, again, this is called a pre-trained network and this is what we utilize most in deployment scenarios or um, you rarely train a network from scratch unless you really have to. Typically people take in a trained network and then fine tune it to their specific use cases. So we will go ahead with this trained AlexNet and let's just browse it a bit further. So in this workspace um, you see this net variable has been loaded. So let me double click that and that opens variable explorer. Now um, it has input names, output names, and then there's a property called layers. When I go into that, I see all the layers that make up this network. So there is a convolution layer, there is ReLU, and so on. But the first layer is image input layer because you need a layer to take in the image. So you need an input layer. And the last one is cl for classification. So let me I'll uh, go into both the image input layer and the classification layer. So you can double click on them and you see the details. So for the image input layer, you see a bunch of details, but the most important one is what kind of input size does it take? So it shows 227, 2273. What it means is it takes an RGB image of height and width to be 227. So this is important because this is the dimension our images need to be for the network to process them. So this data is important. So let's just store this value in a variable. So let me create a variable known as input size and um, I will store it in there, this um, 227 in that. And I'll do that a bit later. Okay, uh, going back to the last layer, which is the classification layer. So you see here, there are thousand categories. And if I double click, these are the different categories. So the category one corresponds to Tench, the so category two is Goldfish and so on. So there are these thousands of these, or rather 1000 of these. So this is our network. And um, just by double clicking, you can like explore the network and see what layers are, um, what do the different layers do? What are their parameters? Now, um, Sometimes it's good to visualize things. So that can be done by um, typing deep network designer. Now this is a GUI app and um, it works slightly differently, but um, I'll maybe make a different video about it. But for now, let me just load in our variable in this designer. So here you see, this is our network. Now, um, let's see, let me rather um, zoom in a bit. Okay, now you can start seeing the names of different layers. So if I go to the top, it's again input layer with the same details. If I go to the bottom, I have the same classification layer. So this is just a GUI, it makes life easier. So if you just wanted to do some surgery, remove a layer, add a layer, you can just drag and drop. So um, this is a useful little app. Okay, but um, this is not important to us right now. So we decided to um, create a variable that stores the dimensions that our network needs. So 227, 227. Great. Now let's load in a test image. So for this, I will load in um, one of the stock images that MATLAB ships with, which is an image of some bell peppers. And I load it into this variable i. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. So I forgot to type in the colons, the semicolon and uh, all the output was dumped on the screen. So let me just clear it up a bit. 
but um, my variable is loaded here in I or rather my image is loaded in um, I can maybe preview my image by doing I am show and you can see it's an image that has bell pepper and so on great now if I check the size of this image by this command size I see it's not what we need it is 384 times 512 so we need to resize this image this can be done by um, I am resize I pass in my image and then I pass in the size that I want which I already stored in this input size variable and this time I'm, I'll put my colons <laughs> great now if I check again my image has been resized it's 227 227 and 3 so I have made sure that the image size matches the input of the network great now let's pass in this network to or rather this image into the network to do that uh, type in classify type in the networks name and then the image and boom it tells me that um, the image contains bell pepper or the image has bell pepper great so it worked perfectly but sometimes notice I told you that there are thousand categories sometimes an image might contain two things or um, sometimes the prediction might be a bit off so y you would rather want a better thing to ask for is to get the probabilities of different classes or the scores of different classes so um, you can get the same thing from classify excuse me classify itself now whenever you type in classify this method returns two things it returns the highest category or the uh, category that has the highest score and also an array of all the scores that are present so to get the result um, I can type in things like this label co comma score equals classify pass in the network pass in the image great so now if I check what's the label it's bell pepper and now if I check the score uh, you see it's it's a, a thousand dimensional array with all the categories having different probabilities and all the cat the numbers corresponds to the names of the categories that we saw a few moments ago so um, this is good so ideally I would like to say have the list of top three categories because I want to see like what are the values or the scores of the top three categories or what is the closest one to the highest predicted score and so on so um, I can do that by first sorting my scores so let me type it out um, I'll sort the scores in a descending fashion and the reason why I want it in descending fashion because I want the highest score to be in front and I can't spell great now I passed in sort command returns two results the first one is the sorted array so it'll uh, sort array and return the sorted array the second one basically returns the indices of the sorted elements so um, the first element of index would be the index correspond to, corresponding to the highest score element the second would be the index corresponding to the second highest score element um, so if I look at IDX you see this is the index of the highest score element index of the second highest score element and so on good I have this now since I said I and notice that IDX is again a thousand dimensional array because I haven't done anything to the scores array I, I haven't reduced its size so if I just want um, the first three I can um, call the indexing like this and it just returns the first three or the top three categories great now if I wanted to see the scores of these three categories um, before that let me just make some space if I wanted to see the scores of these categories I can pass these three or the indices directly into scores and um, oh 
years, it was core. So you see the first category has 0 0.8330, the second category is 0 0.05, third category is 0 0.0198. So you see there's such a big difference between the first and second category, that means the network is very confident that the image was bell pepper. If suppose you had 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that tells you the network is not so sure which one is the image or if it was 0 0.1, 0 0.1, all like it was um, small numbers distributed among a lot of categories, that also tells you that, that, that the network isn't sure. So that's why it's, um, it's always good to look at the numbers and see what the network is actually telling you. Now, again, these numbers are meaningless if, if I don't have um, the, the category in front of them. So let me also pull out the categories and um, Getting the categories is pretty, is rather straightforward. Um, so I can access the categories by typing in net dot. So I type in layers and I want the last layer. Why do I want the last layer? Because um, classification layer is the last layer and I can ref refer it to by uh, typing in end. And then um, I basically want all the class names. So I get the class names and if I just press enter it'll just list out all the thousand class names that's not what I want I want the names of the top three ones because I've saved the top three indices in IDX all I do is just pass IDX into this list of class names uh, oh uh, I made an error let me see um, let me go back oh there's an extra typo. This E shouldn't be there. Um, great. So the top three categories are bell pepper, cucumber, orange. Now, so this is what I mean. Bell pepper had probability 0 0.8330. Cucumber had probability 0 0.05. And orange had probability 0 0.0198. So in this way, you can um, see the scores and the categories associated to those scores. That is pretty much it for this video. So what we did was we loaded in a pretty basic neural network into a variable or um, into MATLAB and then we just passed in an image and saw what category it was. So this is how you use a neural network in MATLAB or rather this is how neural networks are used in general. You pass in the input and it tells you what the output is. So I hope you found this useful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a live script with all these commands and just make, make comment it out. And um, I'll put the link for it. Um, I'll maybe upload it on GitHub or somewhere and put a link down in the, in the description below. So yeah, um, and I will keep on making series about deep learning in MATLAB. And hopefully you like this one. So thanks for watching.